Hi, this is Dev, your unusual host in XBHP. And right now I'm standing here in front of Pangong Lake and with a beautiful machine, Indian FTR 1200. And I came here to share an experience which most of the people don't even have chances to do. Riding a Indian FTR 1200 in places like Ladakh and Zanskar. For most of the people, Ladakh and Zanskar are among the dream destinations in India. For the most part, it is because of the natural beauty of the place, but the challenging terrain is also that excites a lot of riders. And that is why riding to Ladakh at least once is the ultimate goal of most bikers. But for me particularly, I was a bit of an off-road kind of guy. I prefer Janskar over Ladakh. Because Janskar, most of the part there is no road, basically boulders and uh, rivels. Most people would prefer a proper adventure bike for this kind of a terrain. But we went with the best suited one we had in the XPHP garage, the Indian FTR 1200. But was taking a flat track inspired machine to a terrain like that of Zanskar a good idea? Let us find out. The journey started from Delhi, from where we rode to Manali via Chandigarh. The next day's ride included riding from Manali to Gumbok Rangan, while riding through the Atal Tunnel, Kelong, Jispa, Darcha and Shinkula Pass. From Gumbok Rangan, we rode to Dolma campsite and stayed there to visit the Fuktal Monastery. Next day's ride was about riding from Dolma campsite to Padum city from where we made our way to Leh via Lingshed Road and crossing Singela Pass. Then riding via Fotaskar, Lamayuru and on to Leh Highway, we finally reached Leh City. The next destination was Pengongso, on the way to which we crossed Changla Pass. After visiting Pengongso, we made our way back to Leh City the next day. The next day marked the start of our return journey. We rode from Leh to Manali crossing Tanglangla Pass and went down to Mori Plains. After crossing the 21 hairpin bends of Gata Loops, we reached Baralachala Pass. And after crossing Darcha, Kelong, Tandi and Sisu, we reached Manali, from where we rode back to Delhi. Let's talk a little bit about this machine and my experience over here in this terrain. So I call it a mad machine, but why? Now this V-twin liquid cooled engine can produce an insane amount of power in the tarmac. Maybe it is hard to control for most of the people. And you need good amount of reflexes on your right hand to control this kind of machine. We love the design of the motorcycle. The inspiration of the FTR 1200 was the FTR 750. A legendary motorcycle in the flat track scene in the US. It looks old school and yet very modern. In order to live up to the modern badge, this motorcycle comes loaded with a lot of tech. We also love the minimal bodywork and the exposed frame. Big factors in the kind of attention it gets on road. One of the most captivating modern amenities that this motorcycle comes with is the touchscreen display. 4.3 inches of touchscreen LCD goodness. It stands out not only in terms of the crisp display, but the ability of the touchscreen that makes it possible for one to use it even with gloves on. It comes with three riding modes. One is rain, or I would suggest most of the people to use rain mode because in rain it is a more calm machine. In rain mode, this motorcycle acts nearly like a regular motorcycle. Easy to ride and easy to control. Perfect for city riding. And then when it comes to standard mode, I think 70 to 80% people is good with standard mode. In this mode, you get ample power that is still fairly easily contained if you have a well-trained right hand. Then comes to the ultimate mode that is sports mode which is not at all suggestible from my side because the kind of power, the kind of boost you will get in sports mode, it is really hard to control. 
स्पोर्ट्स मोड इज समथिंग दैट मेक्स द बेस्ट ऑफ अस डाउट आर सेल्फ स्पेशली वेन इट इज एंगेज वेयर देर आर नो रोड्स येट वी हैड इनफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज टू टेस्ट दीज मोड्स आउट एज वी हैड आवर फेयर शेयर ऑफ लॉन्ग स्ट्रेच ऑफ टारमैक एंड दिस इज द मोड वेयर द बीस्ट इज ट्रूली लेट लूज In most road trips long stretches of highways are the most boring but with the Indian FTR 1200 you get cruise control which works flawlessly and comes in handy while indian roads and road conditions require you to be in control all the time this is still a great feature that can make itself very useful in many instances when i made this plan i was bit skeptical about this bike because terrain like janskar and this bike will it going to match at all but surprisingly it it worked really well maybe more than my expectations in some areas ladakh and zanskar are very distinct in terms of the road conditions while ladakh has mostly good roads zanskar is mostly under construction so there is a whole lot of off roading waiting for whoever tries to tread these lands the dunlop dtr 3 tires of the indian ftr 1200 held their row in both the conditions but the most helpful aspect of the off roading was the wheel configuration 19 inches front and 18 inches rear the adjustable suspension from olins also worked really well supple enough to not make it a back breaker and taut enough to deal with pirated riding One eighty-three mm of ground clearance is also a boon, especially considering the number of water crossings one tends to find in the region. The seat height at eight fifty mm is a bit on a taller side, and the overall ergonomics of the motorcycle are not meant for the long hours of straddling. Yet, occasional bursts of it is easily doable. Another important aspect is the braking. To stop a machine like this loaded with luggage, you need a lot of power in the anchors. And Indian motorcycle have went with just the right setup for this motorcycle. And here come the Brembo 320 mm disc brakes. This kind of power made with proper calibers from Brembo to stop this machine. And then There is the switchable dual channel ABS. It worked flawlessly throughout the road trip. The stopping power and the ABS in the road in the tarmac it was really really great. And the option to switch off the ABS on the rear is much appreciated as it really helps in off-roading. The Indian FTR 1200 is not meant for touring, especially not this kind of touring. so it needed a fair bit of preparation before it could take on this road trip we would like to thank zana motorcycles for helping us out with that they made bespoke luggage racks for the ftr 1200 in addition to some guards and radiator guards all of these add-ons made this ride a lot easier than it would have been without those we would also like to thank rhinox for helping us out with not only the riding gear but the luggage solution as well tank bag for all the camera accessories waterproof expedition tail bag for 10 days of luggage shark mobile mount and nomad saddle bags for carrying extras and of course fuel the last bit brings us to the little niggle that the ftr 1200 throws up on road trips like these it has an approximately 13 liters fuel tank that promises a range of around 200 to 230 kilometers depending on how you ride it not too shabby but still the range falls a bit short when it comes to road trips like these where fuel stations are far and few that is why we made sure that we were carrying extra fuel all the times apart from this little niggle the indian ftr 1200 is very good for touring despite not being meant for it we faced zero issues throughout the ride as we put it through its spaces in the hot ambiences we had from delhi to chandigarh and then sub zero ambiences in leh and pangongso
the experience I got with this bike it was unbelievable frankly speaking I really enjoyed this bike power the torque the speed everything everything was crazy from this particular bike so if you are out there for a motorcycle that sets itself distinctly apart from the run of the mill adventure bikes the Indian FTR 1200 is surely going to make every journey of yours a memorable one.